I guess I ended up on the shorter positive end of the seesaw of the live action Mulan as critics went, but I still agreed on at least the point that the Renaissance Disney era animated musical version was definitely superior. And well, and while fans of animated musicals adjacent to the mouse have Pixar's soul to look forward to for the holidays, it turns out anyone who was jonesing for a direct hit of Disney animation musical feel that unifies pretty much everything produced between Little Mermaid and Moana can in fact get pretty much exactly that right now, thanks to a shitload of Chinese venture capital aka Shanghai Pearl Studios animation. Yeah, in what feels like an all but undeclared pop mythology arms race, China's extremely active domestic feature animation industry appears to have looked across the Pacific and said, well, if Mickey's gonna borrow our national heroine to prove they can make wuxia movies, fine, we're gonna prove we can make Disney movies, because that's pretty much exactly what Over the Moon is aiming for, with every pixel and frame of its expensive looking being. The characters and backgrounds are a note perfect visualization of contemporary provincial China processed through an even more Disney imitative rounding off than last year's frozen alike Legend of the White Snake, a literal Disney animation legend animator Glenn Keane being brought on to direct from a story and script by the late Audrey Wells, the narrative beats and plot pushing motion explaining songs all arranged in the order they're supposed to be, the animal sidekicks look exactly how you'd expect, the Chinese specific mythological creatures look exactly how you'd imagine Disney would have redesigned them, and the main magical location of the piece looks more like something out of a Disney park than most of the recent things they've built in the Disney parks, all finished off with a 21st century woke Disney style storyline where the heroine is a girl who loves science, concepts like princesses and good and evil get some curveballs and blended families are the big moral and narrative arc. Said arc centers on protagonist Fei Fei, a space and science enthusiast particularly interested in the moon, having inherited a love for the myth of the moon goddess Chunga, and her tragic doomed romance backstory from her mother, also the mastermind behind her family's mooncake business, but whom, yep, because we are in fact hitting every classic Disney beat, including this one, dies tragically from an unspecified illness early in the first act. Years later, as a young teenager, Fei Fei's world is rocked again when she realizes her father plans to remarry a seemingly nice enough, but, you know, just not her mother, woman with a rambunctious son of her own, and in her distress, Fei Fei hatches a plan adjacent to her insistence on also still believing in the myth of Chang'e, she will build a rocket to the moon, collect evidence that her mother's stories were real, and use them to convince her father to not remarry. Uh, yeah, the actual A to B premise here is more than a little, let's say, unclear at the blueprint phase, the recurring kid protagonist problem going all the way back to The Wizard of Oz, where a clearly much older wiser character has to see their reasoning faculties vacillate wildly between that of a toddler and a teenager to cover the spread, and also in spots mainly feeling like the cultural difference between Chinese fairy tale logic and Disney-fied Western magic rules not really fitting with 100% compatibility. The emotional logic behind it actually comes through much more soundly than the mechanics, as usual. An immortal being who, in this version of the mythology, waits patiently in eternity to rejoin her one true love. Chang'e is essentially an embodiment of Fei-Fei having not actually dealt with her mother's passing by not allowing any aspect of her outer life to move on from that point, and it eventually works that this is what she's running toward, even if the on-the-ground logic of why does not. Plus, the upfront plotting is a kiddie adventure quest movie, so there's other, more tangible business to be dealt with ahead of that, obviously. Though actually building a rocket to the moon isn't going to work out for even the smartest child, Fei Fei, and I'm sure you're shocked to learn her maybe not as useless as she thought new would-be stepbrother and their two pet sidekicks, because checking every box, do in fact end up spirited off to the actual moon, where impressively pseudo disney versions of the mythological beings of Chinese cosmology are in fact residing after all, and seriously, that big magic city where a lot of this ends up taking place looks more Magic Kingdom than the Magic Kingdom does at this point, and top build celebrity vocal get Philippa Sue from Hamilton is in fact reigning as a futuristic pop diva monarch version of Chang'e who is not exactly the benevolent presence Fei Fei was expecting. I mean, I imagine the twist here and several subsequent mini twists within twists will be easily guessed ahead of time by the parents and older viewers or, you know, anyone who saw the Lego movie too. Do those guys have a fucking time machine or something? But kids are likely to find it pretty engaging that the film effectively flips itself over into a whole new second quest, with Fei Fei picking up a new Ken Jong voiced animal pal to quest for a MacGuffin that will supposedly solve both her and the Moon Queen's dilemmas, while her stepbrother and animal pals have a palace intrigue snooping adventure to find out just what the Queen is really up to. It's all going exactly where you think it is in terms of resolution, of course, how can it not be? But setting aside the film critic snark to be had at how determinedly the film commits to following Renaissance era Disney's formula, I can't deny that it's a really good example of it. Better than some of the real things, honestly, if I'm being perfectly frank about it. The visuals are awe inspiring, especially the Moon City stuff is just gorgeous. The animation is lively and inventive, but also subtle and for the nuanced down to earth stuff. Let's face it, to get where this is trying to go, and its homage and imitation goals, you need to hit the emotional cores, and not just the missing parent plot details, but a particular slow burn payoff about an aspect of Fei Fei's teenage appearance is just gutting stuff when we get there. The characters are delightful, in fact one of the few significant
significant critiques I'd have, apart from, yeah, they really could have taken another few passes at the whole what exactly are we trying to accomplish here part of the story, since, you know, they're hanging the whole premise on it, is that some of the incidental characters are so much fun we don't get enough time with them. Jong's insecure moon creature, while yes, his catchphrase may as well be, hi, I'm the Olaf in this one, merchandise me, is a terrific version of exactly that. And in his two brief chaotic comedy scenes, Fei Fei's extended family of aunties and uncles are established with so much characterization and warm humor I'd have happily watched a whole movie, or like a weekly sitcom just about this family of people hanging out. They're just really good scenes with fun characters, and the songs, as they certainly need to be, are all extremely catchy and cover an impressive variety. If there was any doubt that Philippa Su had a significant stylistic range, put it to bed, and she hands in a terrific vocal turn otherwise, considering Chang'e turns out to be an extremely complicated, complex character at the literal and metaphorical center of a story that ultimately wants to be about how we rearrange personal and cultural stories to define our sense of self. That makes her an appropriate mascot for something that looks like a cynical construction from the outside, a reverse-engineered expy of a specific studio brand aesthetic, but ends up as a genuinely terrific piece of filmmaking. Over the Moon was a real, unexpected delight, really, and appropriately titled, I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10. You can find it on Netflix right now.